I'm Kevin Heslin. I'm a research manager with 451 Research. I'm here today with Kevin Brown. He's vice president of the Global Data Center offer at Schneider Electric. We're going to be talking about his Tuesday, May the 14th presentation at the Uptime Institute Symposium. The session is entitled The Data Center Dilemma, Build Your Own or Outsource. Kevin, welcome today. Thanks, Kevin. It's good to be here. Great. Uh, so I have a few questions. I think your session is going to be very, very interesting. And I'd like you to tell us a little bit about it. Well, so we, uh, Schneider Electric, one of the things that uh, we're in an interesting position when it comes to uh, customers of ours looking at, uh, you know, how do they evaluate whether they should go to a co-location facility or keep their data centers in-house. And uh, the reason for that is we really, you know, have no... Uh, you know, do, you know, no dog in the hunt, so to speak. In that, uh, you know, if the market moves toward location providers, we still sell equipment, uh, power and cooling equipment to those co-location providers. If it stays with people in-house, then certainly we can satisfy that need as well. So, we actually started this evaluation and research because of customers asking us as some, somewhat of a neutral party on what they should be doing. So. One of the things that we found is that, uh, you know, you know, the decision on whether you want to keep your data center in-house or move out of house can involve a huge number of variables. But what we tried to do was take a look at it and say, you know, can you really get down to a simplified model for evaluating what your options were and getting it down to looking at the financials with some very, very uh, simple metrics uh, so that it could become easier to just understand what you're doing. So that's one thing we've done is tried to come up with a simplified model for evaluating your financials. The second is we also started learning through this research with our customers is that there tends to be these strategic factors which really have nothing to do with the financials necessarily that uh, ultimately may really be the driving decisions. And uh, something we've done is tried to put together a framework for people to discuss these and understand them and you know weight them so that uh, it helps give some context uh, to the conversation. And what we found is that with those two things together is uh, it, it makes for much more productive and effective uh, decision making and planning uh, as, as customers are evaluating whether they want to be in-house or uh, go to a co-location facility. And then ultimately what I want to talk about a little bit too is some uh, things that I see as the longer term implications of some of these co-location trends and uh, some, you know, a little bit of reading into the tea leaves and some of the things that uh, we see happening. So that should be uh, hopefully find interesting as well. Terrific. Why, why Kevin, though, is this uh, suddenly a hot button issue today? Well, what we've found is it's a hot button issue because uh, obviously, the move towards uh, co-location and cloud computing is one of the most significant trends I think we've seen in the industry uh, in quite a while. And, uh, you know, customers are really struggling at this point to understand what is the right decision to make for them given given uh, where they are. So I think that's uh, certainly one, one part of it. Uh, you know, CEOs are hearing about cloud computing and they're going to the data center uh, experts on their teams and asking them what, what the strategy should be. So it's, it's a forcing function that's occurring. But also I think it's just in general when you look at the, you know, the economy and where the market is and the, and the general slow growth that we've been in globally is uh, that's even added additional pressure to make sure that uh, uh, companies are being as efficient as possible with their resources. And certainly that uh, drives a lot of interest in potentially looking at outsourcing. Okay. Now, you've used the word outsourcing a number of times, and it's even in the title of the topic. Uh, I think people well understand what build your own means. What are their outsource options? Well, it's interesting. We, you know, we use the term outsource because, uh, you know, there's, I think that's a more generic term instead of co-location. Certainly, you know, part of that includes maybe you want to move certain things out to the cloud because you might uh, – uh, or you might want to move your data center wholesale, or you might do some mix in between. So, uh, you know, we tried to pick a term that was uh, as general as possible to encompass all of those different options. And, uh, you know, some of the things that we're seeing is it's not, for most customers, it's not a black or white issue. They tend to look at strategies where uh, they might uh, use a mix of cloud computing, co-location, things in-house, and that that's the uh, strategy they're employing for uh, at least the foreseeable future. Okay, Kevin, you do have some insight, though, into how your customers and, and, and other IT operations make these decisions. What factors do you see truly driving the final decision as to where we're going to build our own or whether we're going to outsource? 
Well, again, you know, it, it varies from customer to customer, and we like to talk about that there are these, uh, you know, potentially some filtering criteria that uh, sometimes crop up in the conversations that people may not be aware of. So an example of that, and I'll give one example of somebody who, a customer I talked to who was keeping their data center in-house is, uh, you know, he didn't have faith in the SLAs, the service level agreements that he would have with his co-location provider. Uh, and I went through it in detail with him, and it ultimately just came down to it was a risk issue for him, is that he perceived that the risk of keeping it in-house versus putting it into a co-location provider, that it was less risk for him to keep it internally. So that was that was a key criteria that really, no matter what the financials came out to, uh, that was trumping everything else that was happening. So you see that type of uh, uh, issue going on. Uh, an example on the other side is there was a customer we were talking to where ultimately they were highly focused on cash given the environment, and that was that was driving them towards avoiding a large capital expenditure that you might have when you build a data center, uh, and was very much driving the decision towards moving towards a co-location facility was to uh, uh, maintain their cash position as much as possible, um, and they did have some needs that they had to address from a data center and, and IT standpoint. So those are two examples, and again, you know, when we do the presentation, we go through, and we've identified 10 of these that we think uh, we call the strategic factors, and some of them uh, really trump any financial decision and trump anything else. So you have these strategic factors, and then another area that uh, uh, we think people have had big confusion is cost versus cash. So, uh, you know, sometimes it might be cheaper over 10 years if you build your own data center, depending on what you're doing versus going to a co-location facility, so your TCO would be lower. But if uh, you're worried more about cash, then certainly you know, you, you're going to be, you'd be more efficient with your use of cash by going to a co-location provider. So ultimately, just to summarize, you know, it's really those three things it comes down to most of these decisions is what's your outlook on cash and capital, what's your outlook on cost, and then uh, what are your strategic factors that are impacting your decisions. Well, thank you very much, Kevin. It sounds like a really practical, uh, hands-on kind of session where, where people will, will come away with some things that will help point them to a proper decision-making process. Well, I hope so, and I really look forward to seeing you and everybody on uh, May 14th. Great. Thank you again, Kevin. Okay, thank you.